Let's take a look at this theorem that involves the factor group stuff we've been looking at. So we've got a group and we've got the center of G. So before I actually get into everything going on here, let's remember what the center of G is. The center of G is the set of all A in the group such that AG equals GA for all G in the group. So basically it's the group elements that commute with every other group element. Let's also, because it's going to be important in the proof, remember the centralizer of a group element. The centralizer of a group element is the set of all a in G such that a G equals G A and that's it. So this is the things that commute just with G. The center of the group is the things that commute with everything else in the group. So it's worth noting before doing anything else is that no matter what group element G we pick, the center of G has to be a subgroup of the centralizer of group element G. Okay, so back to the theorem. What we're saying is that if we've got a group and we've got the center of G, if that factor group G mod ZG is a cyclic group, then the group G needs to be abelian. That isn't at all obvious, so let's start breaking it down. Let's suppose our assumption that G mod Z of G is a cyclic group. Okay, well, what does that mean? Because that group is cyclic, that means that G mod ZG has to be the cyclic group generated by some G Z of G. Okay, great. Now, let's let A be any element of G. Now, if we look at the coset then, A Z G, well, all the cosets are part of this factor group. And we're saying that that's equal to the cyclic subgroup generated by this, so that must be G Z G raised to some power because this is cyclic. Every coset is going to have to be some power of that group. Well, of course, that's equal to G I Z G. Now, it would be nice to say that based on this that A has to be G to the I, but that's not quite the case. That just means that A has to equal G to the I times Z for some Z in Z of G. Again, this comes down to the fact that the cosets don't have to be exactly the same. Or, well, the cosets are the same, but that doesn't mean the individual generator is the same. It just means that this thing in the front has to be different by some member of the subgroup. Okay, now let's look at this thing here. Z 
is in the center. So definitely, like we said before, the center is a subgroup of the centralizer of G. So that means, that should be a G, not a Q. Z is in the center. That means it commutes with everything, therefore it commutes with G. So Z is in the centralizer of G. But of course, G to a power has to commute with G. G to the I times G has to be G to the I plus one power is the same as G times G to the I. So G to the I is in the centralizer of G. But remember, the centralizer of G is in fact a subgroup. So if both of those are in the subgroup, then their product, G to the I times Z, is in the subgroup. So that means that A has to be in the centralizer of G. Okay, but if A is in the centralizer of G, going back here, A times the Z of G Since A is in that subgroup, Z of G, that means that the coset times A is, in fact, Z of G. Now, there's so many little details, it's easy to get lost, but let's remember, up here, we just said A was any element of G. Any element of G, we said, is then the coset is equal to that. So what that means is that every element of G is in Z of G. So that says that the center of G is equal to G. But wait a minute, the center of G was the elements that commuted with everything in G. If everything in G commutes with everything in G, that says that G is abelian. Now, I don't know if this theorem by itself is really all that important. I don't see that this being a very common way to show that a group is abelian. However, the proof itself is interesting in that we're using the, these factor groups. We're looking at properties of the factor group to show something about the group. By looking at a particular factor group, we can often learn things about the group in general.